I believe we call this list of players the bounce bike players. Guys that were just terrible, just dreadful. Made you say crikeys at the end of the year looking back at your drafts. Not good picks. Not good picks last year. However, we're ready to turn that sheesh around. Ship is turning around, and we're bike on these players for 2022 fantasy football. We've got eight guys say they're kind of broken up into like six dudes that I really believe are going to bounce back, and then two or three dudes that I'm going to make the case for, but I'm not even sure if I inherently believe that they're going to bounce back. So you'll know what we got to do. We got to tuck our shirts in. We playing basketball. We got to stop yelling. And let's eat, people. <laughs> And just a quick reminder, our season-long draft guide is up for pre-order sale right now. It drops August 1st on bdge.co. You can go pre-order it there. Easiest and least expensive way to get it, though, is by going to prizepicks.com or downloading the app and using promo code BDGE when you sign up and it's your first time deposit, $10, BDGE will get you access to the draft guide as well. Plus, you get that money to play with on prize picks, and we could double the revenue. Mr. Russell Wilson is ready to double and triple the revenue out there in Denver. And he is my first player on this list of dudes who's ready to scorch the earth in 2022. Last year, he finished as the quarterback 16, and I think we're forgetting how good Russ was prior to last year. You look back at 2020, QB6. 2019, the QB3. 2018, the QB8. 2017, the QB1. I'm telling you, we're forgetting just how good he has been as a fantasy quarterback in a run-first offense in one of the slowest offenses in the NFL. Like, the fact that he was able to get these QB1, 3, 6 finishes in the Seattle offense is unbelievable. Last year, Seattle was dead last in the NFL in pass attempts per game, 31.8. They also had what PFF is ranking going into 2022 as the worst offensive line in the game, literal number 32. Uh, it's it's a minor downgrade to the actual outside wide receiver weapons, likely going from Metcalf and Lockett to Sutton and Judy. And I know it's cute. It's something that I've done and compared how the similaristically styled players are together, right? Going from Den uh, Seattle to Denver, the Sutton to Metcalf and Judy to Lockett, et cetera. Um, they're not as pro anywhere near as proven. So they are not as good as them. It's a little bit of a downgrade there. But you add Albert O to the mix. You add a, an extremely good run game behind him, a much better offensive line, two really, really good running backs that will hold down the run game, as well as the ability to catch passes there. They're an offensive line that ranks in the top half of the NFL, not dead last in the NFL. So Russ is going to remind us why he was in the conversation for best quarterback in the NFL for so, so long. So Y'all forgot. I did not. Absolutely love him in that like quarterback 8 to 12 range this year. Next up on this list, we got Mr. Saquon. Last year finished as the running back 35. Bad all around year, just 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 terrible everywhere. Saquon is not injury prone. His 2019 high ankle came from stepping on another player, and his 2020 ACL was from an outlier awkward tackle. There's no real trend there. But now he's two years removed from this ACL tear, man. And it's a it's a big deal, homies. It's a very big deal. We've got the new offensive system under Brian Dable. It's going to be nice there in New York. Andrew Thomas's rookie year was pathetic at tackle. It was really, really bad. However, last year he transformed into one of the better, if not one of the best tackles in the entire NFL. So their line went from one of the worst to at least middle of the pack right now. It's a monster upgrade, big step up. And you look at the depth chart that the Giants have on their team right now, Matt Breda, Antonio Williams, Gary Brightwell, J J Sean Corbin. I don't know. Regardless, there's absolutely no competition for work there. Saquon Barkley, we know he's ridiculously talented. And I'm just going to trust the people that are fucking doctors, okay? And tell me that we are not at risk for Saquon being injured more often than other players. Weird accidents, weird injuries. Giants will be better. Saquon will be better. His like third round ADP right now is out of control. Anywhere in like probably the like 201 to 2223 range might be a little too pricey for me. But once he drops to the back half of the second round, early third round, I'm all in on Saquon this year. Next up, we got Mr. Allen Robinson, the Chicago Bears. This dude somehow played like all the games and finished as the wide receiver 89. I mean, he was so bad in Chicago last year, but Matt Stafford is an absolute career maker with wide receivers, man. The proof is in 
the pudding. And the piece of data I really needed to see, because Allen Robinson's getting up there in age, so I needed to see if he was really falling off as a wide receiver. Can he separate? Can he still beat top cornerbacks and defensive backs in the NFL? And it turns out A-Rob still got the juice, fellas, right? I'm trying to dig up every piece of um, singular data I could find. And if you follow me, you've probably seen me put this chart up on the screen before. But Matt Harmon's reception perception is one of my favorite resources in the fantasy football, and he, he just charts uh, routes by wide receivers. And Allen Robinson was in the 81st percentile for success rate versus man coverage last year, 96th percentile versus press coverage. Look at player profile. His route win rate was number 17 in the NFL. His win rate versus man coverage, number 14 in the NFL. A-Rob still got the juice. He still got the sauce when he's on the field. He can separate and push defensive backs away. And, you know, with Woods and OBJ gone, Robinson is going to see a very, very big target share in this offense, right? He's, this is the sixth highest scoring offense in the NFL. A-Rob is a fantastic jump ball player. I could see him getting a ton of like end zone fades when they get down there. Uh, and the Rams pass rate under Matt Stafford shot up by nearly 5% when they switched quarterbacks to Stafford. I mean, it's not, you know, I, I expect them to air it the fuck out this year, okay? I expect them to use the weapons that they have correctly. And Al Robinson is one of those. And on their schedule, I mean, they play against the AFC West. That is fucking shootout row. So you got Kansas City, you got Denver, you got Las Vegas, you got the Chargers. They also have the Bills, uh, Dallas, Green Bay, like lots of scoring happening on their schedule, man. I can't get enough Allen Robinson this year. I also can't get enough of Cortland Sutton, man. He finished last year as a wide receiver 46. We know why. Bad quarterback play, bad play by him all around. But we have Russ on this list. We are also putting Cortland Sutton on this list. A lot of you guys are going to say, what about Jerry Judy? I personally like Cortland Sutton more than I like Jerry Judy. I just want to leave my drafts with one of those two wide receivers. Russell Wilson has had a top 15 fantasy wide receiver every single year in Seattle since he has taken over as the starting quarterback. One of these guys is going to hit. One of them is going to hit big. I like it to be Cortland Sutton, okay? Sutton excels downfield. Russ excels throwing downfield. One of the most accurate downfield throwers in the history of the NFL. It is scary how pinpoint this dude has been throughout his career going downfield. And Sutton went Sutton went pop with Mr. Drew Locke at quarterback a few years back, man. 1,100 fucking yards a couple of years ago. Easy to forget. But most importantly, and the same theme working off of Saquon, is he is now two years removed from the ACL. We get spoiled with the guys who come back quickly and perform well. But more often than not, the guys back in their first year are not physically and mentally ready to hit the field, hit the sticks, and get fucking paid, all right, and hit that paint box. Sutton will be this year. I remember there was a lot of reports last saw season that that was that were coming out saying even you know Vic Fangio, like head coach, was saying that Sutton was hesitating on the field. Like there were reports in the summer that were like Sutton does not feel like he's at 100 percent coming from the coach. That is like not a good report to hear. It tells me that going into the year he was not 100 percent and. It just seemed like he was very hampered down the stretch, man. He was not in good enough shape because the ACL did not allow him to get into good enough shape probably in the summer in order to maintain any sort of success down the stretch, man. So I think he's coming bike as a new player in 2022. Really excited to see Mr. Cortland Sutton on the field. Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver 35 last year. Uh, I'm excited to see Brandon Ayuk with Trey Lance under center. And I'll tell you why, because Jimmy G simply did not take shots downfield, right? Debo doesn't run deep routes, and Ayuk is is great on like posts, nines, corner routes, all that kind of stuff. And when you look at Jimmy G last year, there was 37 qualified quarterbacks with enough pass attempts to qualify. His 7.6% deep passing rate, right, just the number of, of percentage of his passes that were deep, ranked 35th out of 37 qualified quarterbacks. Now, when you look at his success rate versus the coverage, right, from Matt Harmon, Ayuk was not bad last year. 64th percentile versus man, same thing versus zone, 80th percentile versus press coverage. Uh, as a pure route runner, just just not bad. He took a bit of a step back because his rookie numbers were incredible. Um, but his numbers got much, much better, and Matt even said this in the article about him, as the season went on. And we knew that because all the offseason reports were terrible about Ayuk. Right? He like didn't start some of the games. He was in and out of the lineup. We didn't know what was going on with Ayuk in the beginning of the year. But as he got more acclimated into the offense and got on the field more, his success rate versus these types of coverages got, 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 got way better. It was a sad time, though. You know, he fucking he played it. He played us like a goddamn banjo, man. It took me for all I was worth last summer. Sad. Uh, but Ayuk can ball, though, man. We know that. We know that. We saw that in his rookie year. We saw that in the second half of last year. When you look at the splits, right, the last eight games of last year, I mean, he went up from 6.4 half PPR points per game to 10.9. He went from 7.8 PPR points over 13. So you're talking about over six targets a game, over 70 receiving yards per game. Trey Lance is a guy who throws the ball downfield more, more intermediate, more deep passes. And I think that fits Brandon Ayuk's game a little bit more. 
Okay, uh, let's talk about some tight ends. And these are uh, the the last like four guys I'm going to rip through quickly. Uh, it's Evan Ingram, Jacksonville. I just think Trevor Lawrence targeted tight ends at a very, very high, high rate last year. I've listened to a few Jaguars podcasts talking about how Evan Ingram's really showed up, like put the work in over the summer and has looked great. I know this is every season. A guy who's that athletic should look great when you're in shorts and shit. Um, but he's a tight end 23 from last year, and he's getting drafted about there. So I kind of like the upside play of Evan Ingram to be someone that Trevor Lawrence leans on a little bit with some weekly upside there. We have Austin Hooper in Tennessee. He was the tight end 25 last year. And realistically, man, like when you look at Austin Hooper's career, I think there's like a story to be told here because he had some really good years in Atlanta before coming to Cleveland and just rotting away. He had a uh, 70 catch, 660 yard season in Atlanta two years before coming to Cleveland. And then the next year he followed up with a 75 catch, 787 yard season in just 13 games. Like he was on pace for a very, very big year. We were excited about him. He goes to Cleveland and shit just absolutely dies. But now he's in Tennessee and they simply just don't have the passing options there, man. Like, especially not down by the goal line. So I could see Hooper kind of like backing his way into seven or eight receiving touchdowns this year because he's the goal line um, option down there, man. Last guy up on this list is Roheem Mostert, running back Miami Dolphins. He was out for the year last year. So you can imagine his running back finish was not not very, very, very high. And I made a video a couple of days ago because I know like most of y'all in the YouTube comments are cool and pass the vibe check, but some of y'all don't. And you take everything super fucking literally. So I kn- literal. I know. So I know I'm going to have to be like, how can you like both Chase Edmonds as an RB1 and a Roheem Mostert? Those videos, what I'm saying, RB3s that you could draft with RB1 upside, there's just range of outcomes. There's just things that can happen. So I think that can happen for Chase Edmonds. Do I think it's going to happen? The likelihood is no. Raheem Mostert, the reason I like Raheem Mostert, if he had landed on any other team, wouldn't have liked him. But with Mike McDaniel as the coach who's coming over from San Fran, he has seen what Raheem Mostert has done year in and year out, up close and personal. So he knows what type of running back he's getting with Raheem Mostert. The health is the biggest concern. But now you're finally, like we've always known the health was the big concern for Raheem Mostert, but now you're finally getting to draft him as if we know he's going to get hurt already, right? He's probably like a 14th, 15th round pick, whereas the previous years you had to get him in the 8th, 7th. I think last year he got up to like the 6th round, which was absolutely insane. Fucking bonkers out here. Um, So Mostert's a guy that I might be taking shots on because I think if Mike McDaniel gives him a a chance, which I think he will, and on the outside chance he plays 12, 13 games, Mostert could be very, very good in this offense, man. He could get 12 carries a game, and we know that any given carry from him can blast off to the fucking moon, hit that paint box, and score a tugger. So that is uh, the list of eight, seven, nine guys that I think will bounce back, that I think were really bad last year, but will not be bad, but will be awesome for you in 2022. Fantasy football will recap the list real quick. Russell Wilson, Saquon Barkley, Allen Robinson, Cortland Sutton, Brandon Ayuk, Evan Ingram, Austin Hooper, David Njoku, Roheem Mostert. Okay. That is all I have for you today. Um, I love you. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Hit the thumbs up button and watch some of our previous videos from last week.